So there has always been a lot of back and forth between Team Red and Team Green for being king of the GPU hill. Every time Radeon plays a full house, Nvidia beats them with a roll of flush. This happens so often that the mid-range cards sort of get ignored. Maybe Radeon has realized this and that's why they've revisited the R9 280 and the R7 260. This is the 285 and the 265, what's the difference? Office 365. Get work done anytime, anywhere, and on any device. In addition to 1 terabytes of OneDrive storage, also receive 60 Skype World Minutes per month to over 60 countries. Today we have here our R7 265 card. This particular one is from Club 3D from their Royal Queen series. It packs 2 gigs of GDDR5 memory, requires one 6-pin connector, and is priced at $189.99. Actually, that seems awfully similar to this one right here. This is the R7-260X, also from Club 3D, that also packs 2 gigs of GDDR5 RAM and is priced at $149.99. So, what the heck is the difference? Well, let's take a closer look, shall we? In terms of clock speed, the 265 is actually down a few megahertz. 925 megahertz versus 1030 megahertz. However, upon closer inspection, AMD has packed more transistors into the 265, where you get 2.8 billion in 265 versus 2.1 billion in the 260. This combined with a wider memory bus at 256 bit instead of the 260X's 128 bit means you're actually getting an increase in performance. Taking a look at the performance numbers, as you might expect based on the numbering scheme, the 265 is above the 260 and 260X, but just below the 270 and the 270X. One small catch, however, the 265, despite its better performance, is actually based on an older architecture that the 260 and 260X, and therefore will actually still require a crossfire bridge for dual GPU goodness. Plus, it won't actually support true audio. However, at this price point, it is a very competitive price to performance GPU. Now, let's move on to the newer R9 285. Just having been launched at the beginning of September, we're actually already seeing better benchmark numbers for the 285 compared to Team Green's equivalent offerings. It's the first card to feature AMD's new GCN 1.2 architecture. GCN 1.2 allows for things like better video decoding and hardware decoding for 4K H.264 video. The 285 runs a lot cooler compared to the 280 as it has a lower TDP. You can run this on a much lower rated PSU and only requires two 6-pin connectors rather than a 6 plus 8 configuration. Add on the fact that the 285 supports AMD's true audio, something that both the 280X and 280 are missing, the 285 will offer a great bang for buck gaming experience. So you might be thinking, okay Jack, so just like the 265, the 285 is going to perform better than the 280 and the 280X, but worse than 290. Well, that's where this whole 2x5 naming scheme kind of falls apart. Here we actually have a card that has 4 gigs of RAM compared to the 3 gigs of RAM in the 280 and 280X. The new architecture also allows for better efficiency and is actually 40% better over the 280. And bit rates are different, 256 bit on the 285 and 384 bit for the 280 and the 280X. So actually you're getting something that slots in between the 280 and the 280X when we actually look at the numbers. One final note, because of the new GCN 1.2 architecture, you're also getting bridgeless crossfire. Oh, and of course Never Settle is also a thing, and right now if you buy the R9 285, you'll be getting the Never Settle Space Edition bundle, which includes your choice of three games, which includes Star Citizen, Alien Isolation, and a couple dozen other awesome titles. Personally, I like Dirt 3 because race car. So there you have it. Just a quick summary of the differences for the newer 2x5 cards compared to their 2x0 counterparts. Hope this has helped you distinguish your GPU needs for Team Red. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. We'll see you later.